Yeah. I don't remember. I'm waiting for my wife. morning. The Lord answered my prayer that quick because it came right on after I made that announcement. So we are grateful uh, for this third Sunday Advent uh, or Sunday and then we'll be at Christmas. And then I thought the week after that we'll be in a new year. Did anyone see how fast the year flew by? It flew by. So we are grateful for just the Lord keeping us. The Lord keeping us. Um, so many, so many deaths. Someone, someone wrote on um, too, and so I'm glad to be alive. <laughs> I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to be in the land of the living. Amen. We pray for all of our bereaved families. Uh, sister Todd, we're praying for you and your family. The passing of your sister, we're praying for uh, the Brinson family, uh, Bishop Brinson's. Homegoing service will take place on next Saturday at the, uh, I believe there's a viewing, I don't remember the times correct, but the viewing is at 11, the service at 12, or even a little earlier, but they will all take place at the True Bethel Baptist Church in Buffalo, New York, at 907 East Ferry Street, and we ask that you would keep them in your prayers, understand that, um, uh, Lady Brinson also had an aunt and uncle who passed on this week. And so that is just a lot. Just a lot. And so we ask that you keep that family in your prayers. Amen. Keep that family in your prayers. I wanted to mention, I can't remember the name here in Niagara Falls. Uh, I'm praying for my wife's uh, family and the passing of her aunt in Kentucky. For my family um, in Los Angeles, I have some of you have an understanding unique privilege. My mother, sister married my father's brother, and so this cousin was what we call a double cousin because it affects both sides of our family. And so we ask that you would keep him in prayer. His daughter just found him dead in the bed, and so we don't know the day, nor do we know the hour. So we're just praying. And I tell you what, in all the midst of the deaths and all of the things that are happening, we still have joy. This is a Sunday of joy. And so we don't come to be depressed. We don't come to look down. And yes, in the midst of our sorrow, we come to tell the Lord, thank you for everything uh, that he has done. Amen. Today is um, the day that a choir does not sing, which means that... Um, there's going to be a few of us in Jacoby, and we're going to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen? And amen, and amen, and amen. I, let me just say this. Is pray for the people in the, down south where the tornadoes were. Did you see that? Did you see how it destroyed buildings, churches, houses, businesses? And I hope in none of <laughs> I hope none of you were out yesterday because I heard a lot of people got blew around. I got blew around. Everything in my hand got blew. I thought I was taking off. But you know what? Thank God for his safety. We hope that everything is safe. Be careful as you drive around the city. There are lines down. There are trees down. Some of the traffic lights are off uh, in our city. And be careful. And you have to be extra careful for those people who are not careful. And keep on driving anyway. So be safe. We're not going to try to hold you long on today. Amen. And amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Now we'll start off singing a song today. Let me read the scripture. John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. All things are made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness to bear witness against the light that all might believe through him, about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of God, of man, but of God. And God has his blessings to read into the hearing of his word. Father, we come and we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that you have allowed us to come once again approaching this throne of grace, your throne of grace. We come before you, humbling ourselves, seeking your mercy, seeking your grace, asking that you would put your hands upon us those who are in this place, those who may be outside, those who might be even watching us, touch us, oh God. Touch us, oh God. Touch us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. We need you today, God, in this place. We need you today, God, to move in this place. Touch those who are in desire of hearing from you today. Lord, we know that you answer prayer, that you bring healing to the sick, that you, be, you bring comfort to those that are in need of comfort. And so today, God, we come asking that you, that you would visit us, you would answer, that you would move in a way that we would not even expect. We know that you're able, God. We believe you're able. We have faith in you that you can do all things. So we come today in your power, declaring victory. We come today in your power, declaring healing. We come in your name today, declaring that you have fixed it. And we believe it to be so. In Jesus' name we pray. In the church said amen. And amen. Church said amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together and give God the praise for today. Hallelujah. Some of us made it through a storm, so our hands should already be together. God, we thank you for bringing us to the wind, the rain, and the storm. Hallelujah. How many know that victory is yours on today? Hallelujah. This is not a solo. Thank you for those who prayed for me during surgery. I still have sutures. They come out tomorrow. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory is mine. Victory is my victory today is mine. Hallelujah. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Come on, put your hands together. Victory today. Get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Come on, 
got a solo, everybody. Open your mouth, victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Coming or the birth of our Lord 
Jesus Christ. Celebrating Advent typically involves a season of prayer, fasting, and repentance, followed by anticipation, hope, and joy. Many Christians celebrate Advent not only by thanking God for Christ's first coming to earth as a baby, but also for his presence among us today through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all know who do the barbecue now, don't y'all? <laughs> Many Christians celebrate Advent, not only by thanking God for Christ's first coming to earth as a baby, but also for the presence among us today through the Holy Spirit and in preparation and anticipation of his final coming at the end of time. The Advent word comes from Latin, Adventus meaning arrival or coming, particularly of something having great importance. And so we come on this third Sunday of Advent to remember, to celebrate the coming of our Savior. The pink candle today represents joy. That God brings us joy. Can I tell you something? Sometimes joy is not necessarily how you feel, but in some days you may not necessarily have that feeling. But you know in anticipation that God can. God will give you joy. We serve a God of joy. We serve a God of joy. We serve a God of joy. I should you. Lord, we thank you for these things that have been given unto you. We pray that you bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. And amen. Amen. We sing in a song, Lord. We... It's a Christmas song, everybody. Oh, come, can you sing this? Oh, let us Oh, come let us
me so we can give them an extra hand because I can't clap. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was getting ready for work this morning and, uh, you know, you get those, get ready for church. So I got this notification from National Grid and I almost leaped off of the bed. So the, the text message says, outages are reported around 1552 Calumet. Outages reported around my house. The whole time that the wind was blowing, I was going downstairs and look, the whole street was dark. But inside my house was power. Inside my house was power. I would keep going up and down and see if my husband said, Will you be sick? I said, I remember growing up and my grandmother would get up quiet and still when the storm was raging. So she would sit there and rub my back. My two brothers were doing God knows what, but my grandmother was praying. She said, I need you to be still because God is speaking through your soul. So I went back downstairs again and I saw the You see a black. But I saw in my house that he still had power. He never lost power because I believe in the power of prayer. I said, God, please don't let this house lose power. And I woke up and he still had power. Hallelujah. That may be for somebody watching. God is still a power for God. Hallelujah. God is still. Hallelujah. God still answers prayer in spite of. So, Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We come today to say thank you for keeping us through the storm. We come to say thank you because while the wind was blowing, it was still in control. So, God, we come today to say thank you. We come today to say thank you for keeping us safe inside of our homes, oh God. We come today to say thank you that we made it to the house of God. Other churches may be closed, but Trinity got this church is open. So we come today to say thank you. We come today to bless your name. We come today to give you glory. We come today to give you honor. We come today to give you praise. So God, I thank you for the 
I want to talk about I have joy. I have joy. You do know that this is the season of joy. It is a time where it, 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 where it is said that joy has come. It's a time when we sing joy to the world. And today, many churches that use candles would light the candles of joy. The candle is the odd man out glowing. The only pink candle amongst three purple. And if you know nothing of tradition, it doesn't take much to know that today is a special day. Amen. Today is a special day. You don't have to play yet, Jacoby. Amen. <laughs> today is a special day because of joy. As I told you, the candle is pink because of joy. And to give you the briefest history of this lesson, the color goes back to a single pink rose during the season of Lent. During the Lent season that was traditionally marked with fasting, the early church singled out a single Sunday to feast and to celebrate the coming joy. On this day, Back then, the Pope would give out a single pink rose to honor an outstanding citizen. Clergy even began to wear pink vestments and decorate the church in pink to mark the day. Well, we have uh, gained these four candles of Advent. In the midst of four candles, you still see a single pink candle, which is the candle of joy. But now I ask you, what is joy? What is joy? What is joy? And this could be really a hard question to answer. I mean, there can be so many different things that bring us joy. Joy for me is probably not the same thing for you. TV has recently been offering hundreds of shopping ideals, each one that is guaranteed to bring joy. Get a new car wrapped in a big, big red bow. Get that diamond necklace in the air reset. Or get that shiny new, uh, what is it, PlayStation 5 now? I saw folks on the internet talking about $800, $900, dollars for a game. Y'all remember when I was younger, games didn't cost that much. But now we're spending money. But then with all of the material things, can I remind you that there is also the joy of family. There is something unique about families when they come together. The joy of a job well done. And I could go on and on, and I guess if we were going to get anywhere, I must ask, why on earth is the candle pink? Now we know the historical reason, but what is the theological reason behind the pink color? It is not pink for the sake of cars or jewelry or electronics, nor is it pink for family or job satisfaction. So why is there, why is it pink? Why is there such a thing as church joy? Well, looking through uh, some of the stories uh, that I had collected, and I think I gave you this story before, I was able to find one illustration that dealt with church joy, and I would like to share it with you now, because a whole lot of us as children went through this. A small boy in the pew in front of you suddenly turns around, smiles with a huge grin, looking from person to person, smiling, stretching all the way back to those in the back pew. He is a gurgling, spitting, humming, tearing about 
apart the hymn book or rummaging through his mother's purse, he's just smiling. Suddenly, his mother jerks him around, and with a stage whisper that everyone can hear, she says, stop grinning. <laughs> You're in church. And with that, she gives him a slap on his backside. And as the tears roll down his cheek, she asks, that's better. While humorous, I fear the honesty behind this story. Church is not always thought of a place where we can smile. And this is often where people come when the going gets the toughest. And this is doubtedly true during times of deep trouble. This is where you will find those doors open and candles lit in the wake of national crisis and viruses. This is where people often bring their biggest and heaviest burdens to lay down at the foot of the cross. And you can practically see the weight on their shoulders. How could we even possibly think of grinning when the person next to us is in the verge of tears. On any given Sunday, and I have told you this story, I don't know if y'all remember, to this small parakeet by the name of Chippy. It all began when Chippy's owner decided to clean out his cage in a vac with a vacuum. She stuck the nozzle into the cage to clean up the bottom of the cage. And suddenly, the phone rang. Uh-oh. She reached for the phone with her hand, free hand. And not realizing it, her hand holding the nozzle rolled slowly upward and sucked Chippy into the vacuum cleaner. Realizing what she had done, she dropped the phone, turned off the vacuum with her heart in her mouth. She opened the vacuum bag to rescue poor Chippy. Chippy was stunned and covered head to foot with gray dust. But thankfully, Chippy was still alive. Y'all hear what I said? Chippy was still alive. She grabbed him. Ah, rushed him to the bathtub, turned on the cold water full blast, held him under the water, giving him a power washing. Then it dawned on her that Chippy was soaking wet and shivering. So she did what any compassionate pet owner would do. She snatched up the blow dryer and blasted him with hot air. Poor little Chippy. Poor little Chippy. You may be wondering if Chippy survived all of this. Yes, yes, yes. Chippy survived. But he didn't sing for a very long time. Even now, he mostly sits in his cage, eyeing the closet where the vacuum cleaner is kept, being sucked up washed out and blown over, has stolen the joy <laughs> from his heart. Poor little Chippy. My brothers and sisters, can you blame him? One could easily understand why Chippy doesn't have much joy. And that is where some people are today. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That is some people are. We've been sucked up, washed out, and we've been blown over. And we sit there with our eyes wide open, asking what is going on. Ah, troubled and lost and fearful, devastated, I'm almost done, anything but joyful. And they come here seeking answers. And it is time we answers too. 
It's been a while since our text was read, but let us go back for a refresher. Philippians 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Then again, he says, let me say it one more time, in case you missed it. And again, I will say it. Rejoice. Let people know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but by but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And this is what he says, if you let God know in the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart in your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That God keeps me when I keep, can't keep myself. Thank you, Jesus. That God gives me comfort, even in the midnight hour. Yes, there's some days when I'm going to cry. Don't you tell me not to cry. I am going to cry. But thank you, Lord, that you will come and you will wipe all the tears from my eyes. There's going to be some days when I have some doubt, but I want you to know the Lord will. The Lord will. The Lord will. The Lord will come and see about you. Do I have any witnesses here? Paul was a chicken. He was a He had and was locked in a cold, dark, and wet prison. Had been sentenced to death. And he sits down to write to his friends in Philippi. He says to them, Yet yeah, I'm in prison. And again, this time I'm sentenced to death. And oh, by the way, he says, My life is almost over. Nobody has come to see about me. And I'm just sitting here on my sentence to come. But he says, even though all of these things are happening to me, he says, by the way, keep on rejoicing in the Lord. And I say it again, rejoice. I, I, I don't want to know is there anybody that's going through something that can say that I still have joy. But Paul is the epitome of a chippy moment. And he mentions joy 10 times. How, Paul, can you say, yes, uh, joy in the middle? It, 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 it seemed like you would have laid down uh, and just waited to die. But Paul says that even in the midst of death, that I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to praise him anyhow. Can I be a witness? I'm going to praise him. Christ is on the line. I'm cold and wet and I'm tired and I have no freedom. I don't have a shiny car with a red ribbon around it. I don't know. But there's something about the Lord. There's something about the goodness of the Lord that brings me joy. There's something about the Lord. And I feel in this because he promised. I wish I had a witness here. I said, he promised never to leave me. I said, he promised. And I can imagine Paul saying that this joy that I have, the world that I do in this life, then give it to me. Thank you, Jesus, for being my comfort. Thank you for being my peace. Thank you for transcending all understanding. The 
same time for those who are watching us wherever you might be we extend that invitation of Jesus Christ unto you he is the answer I said he is the answer he is the answer to whatever you need would you do me a favor those that watch and share this with somebody else if you watch and just share it on your page let them know that you still have joy today we extend that invitation. Let us know. You can call us and you have at the church, 716-285-0743. Ah, you can reach out to us, Trinity at TrinityNF.org. We invite you to. We love the phone calls. We love everything that you send your letters and everything. We thank you for what you are doing. God still is in the business of saving, salvation, healing, and deliverance. And so we thank God for this opportunity. Why don't you pretend to give God some praise today for who he is. Praying for all of our ministries, praying for all of our leaders, praying for our city, and for just each and every one that even is here under the sound of my voice. The God is able. The God is able. Lord, we thank you for this day. Glory. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for loving us. Even when we couldn't love ourselves. Thank you for keeping us. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for your touch upon your people as we leave this place. God, I pray a special anointing upon Jacoby today. 
He the labor keeper. Open his heart and his mind and give him no fear. For every bereaved family in this room, those names that have been called, we give you all of the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Now may that grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, excuse me, the Holy Spirit, rest through in the body if you are henceforth now and forevermore. Y'all didn't see the sun just came out. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. God bless you. those who came out of the choir so sister willie was well funeral well this past week thank you please keep that family in your prayers amen